So we've talked about alternative risk mm -hmm. transfer, but you've mentioned ILS now. Can you help unpack that, the differences there a little bit? Here we go. Here comes a awkward Ben disambiguation <laughs> and taxonomy of a space with which he is only slightly familiar. I, so yes, yeah, so alternative risk transfer, I think, is probably the best choice of umbrella term. Yep. I typically, that means not I, a reinsurance contract that depends on the balance sheet of said reinsurer being used to protect you from, you know, mm -hmm. the, the treaty that you've bought, etc. I making sure that gets paid actually out of that reinsurer's own money. Alternative risk transfer is like, okay, how do we access beyond the balance sheet of the reinsurer's other pools of capital mm -hmm. that are out there? Typically, as we said, you know, the much larger global capital markets and, and pension funds and all that sort of thing. How that gets organized is normally in the form of securitizing a risk. Hence, mm -hmm. we end up with this term insurance linked securities. Yeah. I, what form they can take varies enormously. Uh, but typically, these are involving a sponsor, first of all. So we, we call the person who is the sedent the sponsor. Mm -hmm. They sponsor a special type of entity, which is normally a, a special purpose vehicle, protected cell company type. I uh, not doesn't employ anyone, doesn't do anything, but it's a little company that's set up in a favorable tax environment with the express purpose of holding on to the the collateral effectively, the funds mm -hmm. that are going to be held to pay the claim, earning as much of a return as is safe to do so by being invested into, you know, some money market investments or otherwise. And then also having added to it a premium uh, paid by the sponsor, so the sedent, effectively giving their premium to this vehicle that sits and holds it and invests that alongside all of the potential claim to be paid out, sits in a special vehicle, such that then should an event occur based on a range of potential triggers, that fund will either go to the sedent if the mm -hmm. event does occur, uh, or if it does not occur, it will go back to the investor mm -hmm. uh, who, if nothing happens, you know, this is quite a hit or bust product typ typically, uh, then the investor gets their their original uh, collateral back, plus any interest gained, plus the premium paid by the sedent. Yeah. So that's that's the very kind of high level concept of ILS of, of ILS, you know, yeah. securitizing these things. Um, the reason that it tends to be applied to mostly short tail risks is because these investors are not necessarily in it for the long game. Mm -hmm. They want to know that at some point they're going to be able to take their funds out of said special purpose vehicle. Yeah. Uh, hence, it's been quite difficult to apply ILS consistently to long tail lines and casualty because they're worried about, as happens funnily enough with short tail lines as well, mm. uh, getting trapped uh, collateral. Uh, so we saw a lot of challenges with events that had to be adjusted over a longer time period. So if you didn't know what are, what you know what are the claims due on uh, recent hurricanes for example then you were a bit stuck with the him ones for mm. example the harvey Irma Irma, maria, maria etc i mm. uh, and the ils investors were like hang on shouldn't we be getting our money back by now and it's like patience please we're still mm -hmm. calculating how much of your you know pot has been eroded or or not yeah i um, but the way this works typically is, and, and I'll, I'll, let's take a cat bond as a, a basic example here, I, which is another type of alternative risk transfer. Yeah, it's it's a, it's probably the most common form of like a ILS based on the kind of model I described, mm -hmm. and they can be big or small and take various structures. You can even have cat bond lights, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but typically it's like a, a one four four A cat bond mm -hmm. or, or this kind of thing. I but. What you need to really focus on here, I guess, is just the idea that instead of, uh, you know, the, the premium, effectively, we, we call it the coupon and, and, and this sort of thing that goes uh, to the the investor in it. So they effectively have, rather than a promise to pay, uh, like you would if it was a reinsurance deal, the investor has uh, basically put their money into this pot that can then be passed around. So there is a secondary market here that mm -hmm. doesn't exist uh, in the reinsurance normal kind of uh, balance sheet based world. That means that, you know, catastrophe bonds can be traded afterwards. So they actually do gain and lose value depending on how close they are to their uh, maturity, etc. Because, you know, 
at some point it looks very sure mm -hmm. that the money is going to be recovered from that uh, PCC or otherwise. In other cases, it looks like you're going to be potentially losing all of the money, in, yeah. it, in which case the bond isn't worth anything. Uh, so there's this interesting secondary market uh, yeah. aspect to it.